Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Um, well, our guest this morning is um, Elaji Ibrahim Abdullahi. Elaji Abdullahi is the Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the PDP. Uh, so he's in our Abuja studio. Uh, Elaji Ibrahim Abdullahi, uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Folari. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I suppose, well, we, we thought uh, that we try and find out um, how uh, PDP will be moving forward because quite clearly it has been through some stormy weather. Um, I guess the most uh, noticeable of all is the uh, change of status of uh, the erstwhile uh, chairman of the PDP. So I guess the question to ask as an outsider to the PDP is that what does the future look like? Uh, because I imagine there must be some reconstruction, reapprochement, uh, all of those things must be going on. So where is, is PDP in a desolate place now? Well, uh, that cannot be correct, uh, Mr. Follering. Let me start by thanking you PDP. most profoundly for the opportunity Okay, sir. Uh, to, to speak with you again on this issue. And uh, thank you for providing the atmosphere for that to be done. Now, PDP as a political party, like you know, is a party that first of all have survived longer than any political party in the country today. In the last uh, 25 years, it's been in operation. It's got experience. It has gone through a difficult moment. It has journeyed through the murky waters of uncertainty and has defied the odds. It has remained the only party through thick and thin since 1998 at its formation. It's still the only party that has remained unchanged. So challenges like the one bedeviling it at the moment is something we believe we can weather. It's a storm that we believe we can weather. We have gone through worse situations than the one at hand and we've been able to come stronger. So yes, we have a change of uh, leadership in acting capacity as a result of uh, disenchantment and dissatisfaction by some of uh, the members of the party, but we are going to certainly come stronger out of it. We're already doing the resetting. We're fixing our house, and that's the good thing about the party. It's a party that believes all the time there are innovations, there are developments, whether negative or positive. Uh, it provides us all with the opportunity to do the resetting and come up stronger. So that's where we are. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, Alaji. Now, how would you respond to um, using uh, the game analogy that the situation PDP finds itself in, uh, using the analogy of tennis, um, uh, some would say it's an unforced error uh, in the sense that if the, 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 uh, the caucus, the nucleus of the party that is indeed, as you've just said, going to get to work and weather this kind of a situation, if they had come in at that time, perhaps uh, an unforced, uh, unforced error uh, might not have been committed. And if that was the case, uh, so what is different now that will indeed open the way for uh, that which you require for the party, which is reconciliation and uh, moving on? You, you know, our major problem uh, as a party had been unity before the election. Before this uh, recent presidential and governorship election, we ran into uh, murky waters of uncertainty revolving around the unity of the party. And it's a fallout of uh, the convention that we had, the presidential convention. Uh, a number of persons felt uh, aggrieved and dissatisfied with the outcome. Don't forget, before the primaries, there was clamor for the rotation of the zoning of the presidency, first of all, to the southerners. As of right, the Southerners had asked the party to zone the presidency to the South. And some of all said, no, I think the most important thing at the time was to allow uh, a competitive atmosphere where the North and the South will jostle for the ticket, the sole ticket of the party. Anyone that will get the ticket uh, would be justified and will attract the support of the entire members of the party for him to win the election. And that's because over time, PDP has lasted long enough now to go beyond this zoning uh, formula. And that said, we went to the uh, primaries. And the primaries, there were bad blood. 
certainly in a lot of uh, developments that cropped up. First, you would recall Wiki's uh, loss to Atiku Abubakar uh, for the ticket. Uh, even though generally everybody commended Wiki for putting an impressive show and it was a fight that was justified, uh, Southerners were not uh, satisfied. A good number of them felt, no, we should have just zoned the party ticket you know, to the south. That way we would attract their support. But issues uh, that followed administratively did not help matters in managing you know, the outcome. And some of us, even in-house, felt it was not justified for the South to lose the ticket and then were not uh, specified enough uh, to, to be able to, to give the desired support for the election to be won for the PDP. And some of us were not satisfied in-house. I, for one, I did not agree with the national chairman's approach. And we have spoken in-house, we have also spoken outside to say that the one thing that is critical for PDP going forward was winning that election. Any other thing was secondary. If, like it turned out now, we lose the election, where will the fate of PDP lie? And that's where we are now. So some of the steps that were taken from the National Working Committee level, to which I'm a member, were not satisfying. And we were not comfortable with some of them. And we did not pretend we, we said that much. We were accused, some of us were accused of siding with Wiki identifying with Wiki, but what we feared was going to be serious for us was losing the election, and that's where we are. We've lost the election, sadly. Even, uh, even when we are in court, and we believe that the, the process was not quite credible, there were things that were done wrongly. We were falsely uh, made to believe that uh, the beavers will count, and so many other things that INEC pledged they were going to deploy towards giving us a credible election. It fell short of expectation. And that's why we are in court. But beyond that all, we also had very, very avoidable problem as a party, which some of us felt we shouldn't have gone to election with. A divided house. We had G5 governors uh, not in support of uh, the bid up until we went to poll. And then we had faithfuls of the party across the 36 state of the federation aggrieved. There was this enchantment in the air. People were dissatisfied. And for losing Peter Obi, as a traditional party man, because he was a running mate in 2019, if you will recall, for losing Kwankoso, these were all administrative uh, weaknesses on our part that we shouldn't have allowed. If we hadn't gone through those uh, difficulty and weaknesses, we certainly would have been celebrating our victory by now. This is the position. So is it, is, is it therefore, Alaji Abdullahi, that um, um, the signs were not read uh, properly? Because um, all parties like you, uh, like yours, they have their experts, their strategists, uh, uh, you know, uh, visionary people who can usually see and predict a, a, a thing. Uh, because, look, the internal affairs of a party is its own business. But because the party doesn't exist for itself, I, I would like to believe that parties really exist for Nigeria, for the country, uh, to get into office, to serve uh, the country. I, I, I don't know. The beginning of the problem, which is, PDP decided to go its own way and not uh, uh, zone the presidency uh, to the south in the final analysis. Um, so uh, because PDP is a national party, how, how is there a very big problem now explaining it to the ordinary Nigerian that this is indeed uh, a, a national party if it decided to go its own way as opposed to the national sentiment which is a... There's no compulsion, as PDP proved, you, any party can go its own way. Uh, but for the non-party member, who might be perhaps thinking of signing up, uh, do you think that's a, that's a problem that you are also going to have to include in the ones that you are resolving uh, as we go forward? Persuading the country, uh, that is the ordinary person who might want to become a member, that you, you, you can go to PDP because PDP is not playing ball the way everybody else is? Well, uh, first, uh, Mr. Follery, you would agree that after a party's life uh, span has reached uh, what PDP has uh, been able to achieve, I mean, the lifespan of PDP now is 25 years uh, going forward. And it has ruled this country for a period of 16 years. 
It has governors from the southwest, from the southeast, from the south-south, and of course from the entire north. And over this period, it has come to be associated with the people. People love the party and the party loves people. No political party as of today that has not metamorphosed into another political party since 1998, except the PDP. And for that reason, it is the only party that has defied the odds. That said, for Nigerians to even doubt that the PDP would be able to uh, relax and remain as a time-tested platform for, 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 for participation, it's going to be surprising because that's the only party that has proven. In fact, if not for the election that we said we are not satisfied with, I mean, uh, by now PDP would have been in power. It has always been the problem to even the APC that has lasted the last eight years and has brought Nigeria to this sorry state. You know that it did not take uh, Nigerians two years of uh, Buhari's presidency for them to regret, and they express it everywhere, in the market square, in the churches, in the mosques, in the places of work, every other place Nigerians have expressed their regret to go the way of APC in 2015. And we are all living witness to the massive degeneration and the spoliation of our economy and the tragic fall of our beloved nation from the high point of glory in 2015 to this abysmal low. I mean, spiraling inflation and administrative incompetence has re reduced even the quality of life of people, inhabitants of the villa, not just Nigerians, people who reside in the villa, who ideally should have the feel of the crumb out there, are the ones now complaining bitterly of how bad the system has been. Not to now talk of the uh, generality of Nigerians like you and I. So the truth yeah, but of the, the matter is of that nobody Sorry, should even... Alaji. The generality of Nigerians um, still voted uh, for APC, uh, the ruling party. I mean, I just, you know, want you to just point that out because the way you make it sound, no administration is going to ever be perfect. But the generality of Nigerian people uh, did indeed vote the ruling APC back into power. I don't think that's correct, uh, Mr. Follarin. You will agree that we are in court first. The yes. elections. The elections that uh, we had recently is still in contention. PDP has not accepted, Labour Party has not accepted, and other political parties that participated in the election have not also accepted the outcome of that election. It is described as one of the worst elections in Nigerian history. And so it's not uh, uh, foreclosed yet. Since it is something okay. that is subject to contention and it's before our courts, uh, I don't think it's uh, satisfactory or it will be behoven of us here to sit and say that uh, Nigerians voted for the APC. If Nigerians did, we will not be hearing what we are hearing, like the clamor for uh, uh, government of national unity, like uh, uh, interim government, and what have you. So the fallout but, but of surely, the election surely you don't support is this those calls for a government of uh, uh, an interim national government. I'm sure you don't support that. Yes, I sure don't. I do not support that. It is either the APC has won the election or the PDP or the Labour Party, which will be determined in our courts of law where we are. Okay. Um, uh, one moment, sir, because um, uh, Mr. George, uh, calling in from EKJ, are you there? Uh, good morning and uh, good, good morning. morning to your guest. Good morning. Uncle Yore, <laughs> it's very, very funny in our country. An election is only a judge fair when a contestant in question is the winner. If you ask the other person that didn't win, you will say it was not fair. The same person, if he wins tomorrow, he becomes the best election. I think it is time we come to terms with truth. Your guest said something that caught my attention. He, he prized the PDP as the oldest party in the system. Yes, there are 25 years. But when you look at the actions of the party in terms of management of crisis and affairs in the, uh, in the party, it doesn't seem to match the experience that they have. It doesn't match, you know, look at the primary. You have a constitution, and that constitution is very clear on how to rotate power. You decided to bypass the constitution for the sake of one person, one person just came and said, look, let us set this constitution aside. 
and it is for his own personal interest, not for the interest of the country, you agree. You don't expect people of integrity with, within that group to agree with something like that. And you know from experience that there are consequences for such actions in the elections itself. That is what has uh, played out. And then the management of the group, the management of the people. For you to uh, bring experience to bear, it says on how you manage the group. Okay. When somebody does something wrong against the, the policy of the party, how you discipline that person without fear or favor. Not that you will take it from one person, then you don't take it, take it from, from the other. Okay. So, um, uh, Mr. George, thank you for calling in. Let me bring this to um, Laji uh, Abdullahi. Um, considering the longevity of the party, uh, how would you respond to the notion that, well, the uh, implied experience uh, didn't really show, uh, considering the state that we're in now? Yes, I want to agree absolutely. It did not help uh, us in the bid up to 2023 election. We honestly did not... Uh, approached that election with um, a united uh, and a common front. We were divided as uh, NWC, that is the machinery that is responsible you know, for driving the affairs of the party. And that was the only problem that uh, uh, culminated in the loss of the election in the way we did. Because certainly there were a few things we should have done better. I agree, I said it at the onset. Yes. The experience that we, we, we thought we have and that we should have deployed in, in winning the election was not deployed. But like you will have on your, on your screen, you could see how uh, busy we have become since uh, uh, Umar Ilya Damagun has taken over in acting capacity. His Excellency has been part of um, you know, the, the last administration of uh, Iochi Ayu. And he's a person that has sufficient experience in party management. And now with the innovations and resolutions and the advice that we have opened the house to take him, we are going to get it right. Uh, we just want to be done with the few elections that are before us, like the two governorship elections that are pending and some uh, senatorial and federal constituencies. And then we will call for NEC. The next executive uh, committee of the party will meet to take a postmortem of what happened, who did what, okay. and why they did what. At that venue, we would be able to aggregate the views of members and to be able to take the decisive decision to ensure that the party and those who misled it are not only reprimanded, but a uh, decisive decision is taken for the party to move forward. But certainly, uh, the unity of the party was put to test the cohesion that we need to win election was not there, and that disunity was responsible for the seeming uh, disappointing results that we, we, we had out of the election. But I must clear something very quickly. The election, that is not an admission that we lost the election. But throughout the life of PDP, never was a time PDP performed and went to election with less than 10 million votes in the history of uh, its, its uh, uh, aspiration for presidency. This is the first time that is happening. But even when we are not satisfied with the outcome, we still believed that uh, PDP should have done better than what it did okay. if we okay. had approached the election with a united front. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Alaji Abdullahi, especially for um, some of the forthright uh, comments that you are making. Mr. Uh, Mohammed in Abuja is standing by. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. Yeah, it, uh, I will repeat again, Uncle Yori. I don't know the politics of... Uh, uh, I don't know the politics of... Uh, from 70s downward, but from 80s, I'm well, well aware. Because then I'm a young, guy, I'm a young boy. I know the politics of uh, 70s up to now. But for somebody to come on, on air and tell us that this election of 2023, that people went on severe, severe heat of cash front because of politics, they deny Nigerians their money, they put us in serious problem because of one person, that they think he has money, that if he uses his money, he will win. But by the grace of God, the God that made this world, he now turned back and chose that person with eight point something million people voted. 
and somebody is telling me that Muris Wu and other PDP uh, chairman then that can declare election when people are voting on the field. Those ones, they are clear winning. This one that people suffered is calling this election that is not fair. But let's be sincere to ourselves now. Is, is politics madness? Even if this uh, election is in the court, let's wait for the court now before we now uh, judge, uh, be our judge by ourselves. But somebody cannot say that this election is not, clear, is not free and fair. Because you don't have the mandate. Somebody has been declared winner. You cannot just come on air and say that this election is not uh, 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 free and fair. Wait for the court to declare fair. Since you say you are angry, you take the... Well, he, he has court. said that, um, unfortunately, for the party, the PDP lost that election. And this is without yes. prejudice to the fact that they are in court, which is the orderly way to do things. But you say that, the election, you say that this election is the worst election so far. That is what he said. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> Thank you very much for calling in, Mr. Mohammed. Um, so, uh, Mr. Abdullahi, um, you are our guest, and uh, we did invite you, and it's because we want to know, we want to find out. And so, uh, we are not very likely to, you know, uh, take you on in a hostile manner. Uh, but whatever the guests, uh, whatever the listeners do bring to the table, uh, you might want to respond to, such as the case with uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, calling in from Abuja. He takes serious exception mm -hmm. to your implying that there was anything whatsoever wrong with the victory of APC, and this does not mean that any party cannot go to court. Mm. Let me start by thanking you and commend your professionalism, Mr. Iori Folari. I've always said that the dexterity and professionalism that you have brought to bear in your job is second to none. I have spoken to virtually all the media uh, organizations in this country. A moderator like you is yet to be seen, I must admit, and I'm not saying this to flatter you. I said this because the last time we spoke, you had Mr. Cortis uh, in studio. This same kind of disagreement ensued in the course of the conversation. But you were quick to remind him, and you quoted me verbatim. In fact, you went further to tell him that I was being hyperbolical. I remember this vividly. Every time I watch that video and discuss with people, I will be fair to you to say that this is exactly how to moderate um, you know, conversation. And today you have repeated the same thing by letting him know that I first admitted that we have lost the election, no thanks to our in-house disagreement. I also went for that to say some of us did not go to that election satisfied with the approach and the steps that we have taken. I have gone for that to say that we have been uh, casted by, as uh, uh, pro-weekies within the NWC just because of our disagreement with the approach. Then I went further to say, even though we are not satisfied with the outcome, for which reason we are in court. And I went further to say that the election fell short of expectation. As long as he has lived, I've also lived in this country to believe that that election was the worst. How on earth will you have an election after assuring the international community and everybody? The chairman of INEC went to even uh, Chatham House to expose our nakedness by telling them that this will work. But it turned out it did not work. Everything that he said he was going to do fell short of expectations. And then we resorted to the manual option. I mean, how long will we come as a nation and be truthful with ourselves? I am not sitting here to tell you that I have not accepted uh, the, the announcement of the Federal uh, Electoral Commission as... Uh, having Tinubu, yes, Independent National Electoral Commission, as having Tinubu as the victor of that election. I have had, I've accepted as a Nigerian. But until it is determined, like he also ad agrees, in, in the court of law where we are, I will not be able to rest on my oars in describing the election as falling short of expectation. So that's just the, uh, okay. the position. Okay, Alaji Abdullahi, uh, thank you very much. Um, and also for your very kind words. Let me bring, in, uh, bring on Mr. Ola now, also calling in from Abuja. Good morning to you, Mr. Ola. Hello, good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning, sir. Yes, thank you very much. Sir. This is Sir Ola calling from Abuja. Okay, go ahead, please. Hello, sir. Go ahead, please. We can hear you. Hello, can I go on? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay, and I also greet um, the Deputy National Secretary in the, in the studio. You see, um, first of all, let me, let, me, let me put this forward. 
the fact that INEC declared that somebody um, was the winner of an election does not um, necessarily mean that, look, that was what transpired in the election. I still believe that, um, even though I'm a full-fledged Yoruba person, I still believe that um, I, I, I tried to not win that election. Do you understand? Uh, wait, Mr. Ola, uh, you're, uh, you're losing me. There, you're uh, losing I, me, I, I, and I'm not, not talking about no, audio quality. Did you just say that the look, fact the that INET the, declared the, the a certain result does so not mean that that's what transpired well, within the election? Uh, be, because I'd have to, you know, demur. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? No, uh, it's like the, the, the land is not um, uh, land is fading. Okay, please carry on then. Please carry on. Okay, oh, okay, sir. Now, 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 this is what I'm trying to bring across. Look, everything that is happening in PDP now, it manages from the fact that some people lost the primary. And they, they, they couldn't just be pacified. Wiki that is talking about power shift to the south. Wiki was in the party in 2011 and 2015, when Jonathan usurped the, 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 the tenor of the North, you know, he, he contested in 2011 when it was the, when it was the turn of the North. He also contested in 2015 when it was also the turn of the North to rule the country. Wiki and Co. did not see anything wrong about that that happened in time. They didn't raise any issue about power shift to the South. You know, that has been my own contention. You see, it will come to equity must come with their hand. Fine. You know, they've done what they, they, what they wanted to do. I want to believe that, look, probably that is the way God wants us to, end, to pan out. But I want to believe that, look, Atiku and his team did not do anything wrong. And I, wanted, I, wanted to, I want to put it to the National um, uh, Deputy uh, Secretary in, in the studio that Atiku and his people did not do anything wrong as far as how they went into that election. They tried as much as possible to pacify Ricky and his guy, and they were the class There was nothing they could do. Do you understand? So, 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 so it, 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 um, if you look at it then overall, it was the factor of OP that affected um, the outcome of the election when it comes to the PDP. It's not actually the issue of the G5. The G5 that couldn't uh, 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 assist themselves, the government couldn't assist themselves in their own um, different domains. They lost their territorial seats to, to opposition. Do you understand? So it's not even a matter of G5. It is the OP factor that actually led substantially to the outcome of the election as far as the PDP is concerned. Let me just put it um, um, uh, on, on record. Okay. But, uh, uh, All right, then, Mr. Ola. Partial or no partial, whether PDP then broke its own constitution, did not break any constitution. Okay. The last president in PDP, as of 2015, was a southerner. So it was not an uh, act of this world for them to ask power to go to uh, the north part of the country. Let me just put it that way. Thank you very much, uh, Oku Jordi. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much, Mr. Ola. Well, you put across your, um, uh, your analysis of the situation. Uh, I, quite frankly, there are aspects of it that were not too dif uh, different from what... Uh, uh, Alaji Abdullah here had also said, but I'll let him respond himself after this break. Alaji Abdullah, we've got to go up on a break. It won't be too long. We'll be right back, and then you can, you know, add your commentary to that. Okay, welcome back, and uh, our guest is uh, Alaji Ibrahim Abdullahi, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of um, uh, the uh, PDP. The PDP for a long time was the party in power, and then it lost power and has been scrambling, scrambling since then. Uh, it might have been this year, but it turned out not to be so, as we've just been hearing from both uh, Alaji Abdullahi and some commentators that have called in. Uh, this was something that was internally uh, inflicted. I'd use the analogy of an unforced error in tennis. Um, but uh, Alaji Abdullahi, you, 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 you heard um, uh, Allah from Abuja. He was quite, you know, energized in his uh, submission. Uh, some of it you had also said yourself, but uh, uh, do you have any commentary on his take on the affair? He brought in the name of Wiki, which I was going to come to because uh, uh, the PDP is certainly more than Wiki, I would imagine. Yes, he's, a, he's an integral part of it. We'll come to the whole matter of uh, uh, the role of Wiki and the G5. But would you, do you have anything that you wanted to comment on Ola's uh, submissions? Yes, uh, let me again commend you for your effectiveness and efficiency in moderating conversations of this nature. I, I, I did hear you uh, uh, respond to him that, okay, it's not any different from what I have said. People often get agitated over nothing, and they tend to just contribute uh, for the sake of contribution. Otherwise, I don't know what he has said that is different from what I have said. First, if he is talking about the 2011 uh, participation of good luck Jonathan against the zone, zoning arrangement to the north because he succeeded Yaradua who should run eight years but did not and he completed his tenure and still aspired when many believe it should be the turn of the north and then repeated that in 2015 and lost the election 
we in that, in that merely in the participating into the presidency, uh, presidential election of 2011, he has put a rest to the zoning uh, arrangement, if there was any. And that was why some of us said, no, it should be opened in 2015, I mean in 2023, in 2019, for anybody that is suitable, you know, uh, across the divide to aspire. We are 25 years old, for crying out loud. If we promoted uh, zoning arrangement when our democracy was relatively nascent, now, 25 years after, the party has evolved into a behemoth of some sort where we would allow the best man for the job. And this best man can come from the southwest, he can come from the south-south, he can come from the southeast. He can also be from any of the uh, northern region. So that was why some of us were not uh, uh, decided on the issue of zoning the presidency you know, to the south like they wanted in 2023. We said we could open it for the best man to get the job. And, and that was it. I said that much. I also mentioned the, part, the fact that we lost uh, a substantial followership from the southeast in particular as a result of losing Peter Obi, who was the running mate in 2019 to Atiku Abubakar, which we shouldn't have done. But leadership failure, which I have admitted we, we went through, you know, the IU-led NWC was arrogant, was haughty. It was far and clueless to a large extent. I am one person who is a member of this uh, uh, body, and I have sat here to tell you that things should have been done differently. We should have gone beyond mere rhetorics and gangsterism, or, or the, the grandstanding, rather, that we, we, we put, to go and lobby okay and ensure that we are able to reconcile fully with these people All before right. we went to poll. And we should not also have allowed the divisiveness that characterized the PDP before we went to poll. And Excuse even the decisions that in. are you took Excuse after me for the in, election. I, I apologize for butting in, but um, yes. a Mr. Lukman in Ghana has been waiting to join the program. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Mr. Lukman in Accra, <clears throat> Ghana. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Oh. Uh, thank you for Mr. Abdullah for coming on board. But uh, I'm highly disappointed in what uh, most of what uh, Mr. Abdullah is saying over there. As a leader of in a country, as one of the uh, executive member of one of the most biggest political parties in Africa, I think most of them should be able to speak in a manner that they will put the country to the whole world in a, in, with great integrity. When Mr. Abdullah is saying that the election is the worst, he need to break it down for us. We have we, we conducted an election in 176,600 polling units. They should be able to tell us the percentage of area that has irregularity. We did not have up to 1,760, which is 10%. So if we have problem in 10% of the irregularity and we had regularity in 90%, they are taking, they are throwing away the 90 percent, and they are they are trying to rubbish the election with the 10 percent of the irregular. That's been unfair to Nigeria and the INEC. Most of them refuse to speak about the diverse achievements. Most of the governors that can easily win election in previous election that was conducted on that PDP lost their lost ordinary Senate, Senate election, and you are saying the election is the worst. Can you tell us what you mean by the worst? You should be able to define it. People should not come on, on national TV and just be putting out information without backing up with evidence and facts. That is so bad. You, you, you as a PDP leader are supposed to know that you, you will lose that election because you've lost a man that delivers south-east, south-south, which is your strong goal. You've lost, lost, lost him to Labour Party, which is what will be. So how can you expect PDP to win? Even if, we, if you claim that the PDP, the G5 are not doing anything or they don't have any impact. What about would be the six million supposed to be for PDP? And you lost that heart. And you are saying it's about, and IMEC came out, said their, their server has been, has been attacked 162, 162 times in the, on that day. And you expect them as well to see trans, to transmit the results. If at the end the server was being attacked, he read the elections through the server, he will still be blaming high neck. I think we need to be very, very careful. If Mr. Abdullah elects that person and said, Mr. Yori, I'm bringing you 10,000 naira the next 20 minutes, and he left that to do, and maybe he fell down, they rushed him to hospital. Can Mr. Yori blame him that he didn't bring the, the money? Because he has made something else that is more ahead of the money he's bringing for you. Anything can happen at any time. But we must prevent 
the 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 circumstances that is what what I like did that they couldn't okay. to transmit the report. It doesn't okay, mean Mr. Lukman, I want to thank you very much for calling in. Serious exception taking to um, uh, your assertion, uh, Mr. Abdu uh, Alaji Abdullahi, uh, that this was the worst election. You could not back that up, according to that caller. And um, so, how plead you? Well, uh, <clears throat> it's um, <clears throat> relative, depending on how you choose to look at it. I was careful in the use of the word uh, worst, and I'm still with, not withdrawing that word. <clears throat> for, the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the time I have been around and have been participating in election, I can tell you here uh, unequivocally that that election was adjudged by international community and Nigerians. Observers and civil society organizations that took part in that election describe it as such. If the example and the analogy he gave of wanting to or pledging to give you a 10,000 and I fall sick, I mean, it still doesn't stop the fact that I did not bring you that many. So what we are saying is that what they told us they were going to do, they should have foresaw the possibilities and the implication of uh, 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 going with, I mean, voting uh, manually which turned out as a situation. They should have foresaw all these possibilities. If they come on election day and tell us that 190-something times their, their site has been hacked, that's not anybody's problem. They gave us all the assurances and the guarantees that they were going to make effective use of their beaver. And, and, and even the IREC. I mean, for crying out loud, if problem comes, are you now saying I should come and blame myself or go and blame any? And in any case, he also mentioned the loss of uh, uh, Peter Obi. It's something I have said at the onset of this conversation, that we should have done and approached that election differently. We should not have allowed the remote and immediate causes that precipitated you know, the exit of uh, Peter Obi out of PDP to go and float mm. a political party as, uh, as new as uh, Labour, relatively three months in, in the race, and he's able to mobilize the number of votes in millions that uh, uh, the PDP and Atiku mobilized. So I was in admission in the beginning that we were wrong to have allowed that happen. I have blamed the leadership. I have owned up that we had weaknesses on our part. But that does not take the fact that we have also seen lapses and monumental weaknesses in the electoral umpire. And they did okay. not keep be, uh, to their words oh, and all the assurances they gave the world. Okay, sir. Be that as it may. And um, as you said, the matter is, well in, is, is in court, um, as indeed it is the right of the party. Your party is not the only party uh, that is in court. But this was going to be a conversation. I know it, it, it could not but come into it. This was going to be a conversation about the internal crisis and the future of the PDP. So I understand how these sort of uh, matters had also come in. Uh, but when you look at um, the crisis uh, within the PDP, uh, the G5 governors, uh, of which uh, Governor Wiki is, a, is an integral part, in fact, a foremost part, and maybe some other you know, aspects of it. It is that, how that is going to be resolved, that I'll next be um, seeking your uh, impressions on. But in the meantime, uh, I want to thank Mazi Okorwa for, in Arochuku for holding on all this while. Good morning to you, sir, Mr. Uh, Mazi uh, Okorwa for. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning, Sir That's Mazi Okorwa for from United States. Wait. There are things you have to look into that, number one, there should be power and money. The power in PDP, when I say that these are cities, that is say, making PDP shaking up to today. We were expecting PDP as one of the strong opposition party at the before. But now, everything has just gone to them. Now, the J5 or the G5, we are talking, only one person survived it. Your your state governor. The rest. See my brother in other see the one uh, in uh, see the one in Enugu, uh, see the one in Jonathan. Uh, and Wike is not contesting. Uh -huh. Now, Wike is not contesting. That was just a survival. Now, we this. It is a lesson for politicians. When you are in a political party, you don't think that everything must be the way you want it. You must listen to people's opinions, you must listen to people's thoughts. But in PDP, only one man, because you have access to money, because you have access to power, that is power and money. That is what is happening in the PDP. And in PDP, don't take time. By the time we saw the new government, the new, the, the, the new head of state, President-elect, what will happen? PDP will just be a five-course story. 
I love political parties. I think we saw, I was reading paper this morning. They said they have up to six political parties that are under uh, that uh, they, they have majority in the House of Reps. They have 163. Then APC have 162. And the new position parties are the other five or six or seven. They are not the majority. Now, all this was coming on board. By the time they sit down and arrange themselves, those 163, do you think the other open the PDP that was leading as official party, they will not. All those new parties coming up now, they will stand their way. That is why I'm saying that those people in uh, the new political party stand their ground. Not when you enter the house, then you start changing, leaving your opinion and going to the party. It doesn't make sense. But the thing is, this, PDP is now at the, at the, a crossroad. That is a standby. It's a time bomb. By 29 May, we know whether PDP will stay or not. But the question is this, Power and money are derailed. Only one man can pass this or just go on. May God help you. But the, the many four, they are still dangling, 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 dangling. But the thing is, uh, you can leave the office hard. Wahala is going to bust for them for the house. I'm not praying for Wahala, but they should try about as possible. Put the house in order before they leave office. If they don't put the house in order, GDP is going to go back by the stage. Sorry. Good morning. Mazio Krafo. Okay. <laughs> Good morning to you, Mazio Kuruapo. Uh, in Arochuku. Um, okay, indeed, um, that's, that was where we were. We, that, that's the whole center of this conversation, which is um, putting the house back in order. Um, and I think it has started uh, because there's an acting chairman in place. But let's talk a bit about that. How optimistic are you, um, Alaji uh, Abdullahi, um, that this is doable? Because you just heard uh, that viewer say that from his point of view, PDP is at a crossroads. If he gets it wrong now, it could actually, God forbid, go into oblivion. So, uh, and then with the alliances that are going to have to be, uh, I imagine, will have to be made now. Uh, how does PDP see itself uh, uh, remaining as a, uh, you, you know, a, a credible and a viable uh, opposition, which I imagine would be your wish? Well, it's not going to be imagination, Mr. Iori. Uh, PDP, like I began uh, this morning, is one party that has lived through thick and thin. And it has survived all the other political parties that were formed together with it in 1998. As we yes, sir, but, but today, today it can't do anything without going into alliances with um, you know, all the other parties that didn't uh, succeed in the election. It is all survival strategy. It is an essential um, um, ingredient in development of a political uh, party. Uh, this has happened even in the Western climes. So we've seen labor in alliance with, uh, 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 in the UK, what do you call the other political party? We've seen it in America. There are times that you make concession. You know, you, you, you partner with a political party to give you majority. It has happened in the, in the First Republic. Zeke went into alliance with his NCNC, with the MPC. There are times that you just have trouble, like the one we have at hand, and you would be able to take back, in retrospect, what are the problems, where you got it wrong, to be able to re-strategize for the days ahead. It is essentially what I told you. I did not pretend here, and I'm not about to, to, to do, that we have no problems at hand. But responding to your questions uh, proper, the acting national chairman, who was the deputy uh, national chairman not, uh, before he took uh, the acting capacity, you know, is one person that is imbued with sufficient party management. He is a party man with knowledge. He ran for the governor uh, of uh, uh, Gombe. No, sorry, Yobe. He ran for the governorship of Yobe. He was an ambassador from this country and has been the national secretary. He's been involved. He's remained with this party from 1998. He has been a tested administrator who has now opened, like you can see on the screen, you know, the house to aggregating the views of others, calling every other person. He has not taken side even in those trying times. He has been with the Wikis. He has been with the Atikus. He has been with the Tambor. He has been with every other person. I think our problem, essentially, was those few elements who arrogantly gave themselves the, or pretended to have the entire knowledge of uh, party management, who today are struggling to even uh, 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 present their face. Like the governor of uh, Sokoto State, 
who as director general of the presidential campaign and someone who was to run for the presidency, you know, turned out uh, losing his state uh, cheaply to the APC, you know, in Sokoto. And these were the people who moved from APC where he was and came and, and, and lord it over us and made it look as though they have the entire knowledge. We were in disagreement with this element by letting them know that, look, we cannot do it this way. You just came back from APC. As Speaker of, uh, uh, of the Federal House of Representatives, he was in APC. And all through the, his political life, from PDP APC, he has not been consistent. And we saw that problem. We told him that much. Look, you cannot do anything. He went and appointed Adamo Aleru, for example, somebody who moved into the party after losing his primaries for senatorial bid in Kevin State in June, when the primaries of PDP had held. He lost in his own party of APC, and he came again to PDP, and, and, and wanted the ticket after primaries have held for senatorial district. And these same people connived and gave him that leadership. They did not stop there. They gave him the leadership of the region. I mean, this was the same person who went in his disagreement with uh, Konkwaso in Kano State and led us to where we are. So we know the in-house problem, intractable okay. problems that we ran okay. into before the election. Let, let me we bring in, uh, maybe I'll find, and so maybe, I'm are, sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let me bring in maybe our final caller, uh, uh, Mr. Yakub in Dokwemu. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. And, uh, yeah, good morning to your guest. Uh, is it Chibiori, Nigerian citizen, we are not a fool. I totally disagree with your guest this point by using the worst, word of worst election that we have last to this time around. Because if you the, I personally have been participating in elections from, you say, when we have a hero party. Since that time, up to now, I've been participating in elections. If you're the, the most credible election and fair election that we have ever had in this country is this last election. And then I, ha I stand to be correct. And then I have my reason saying that. If you the, if you could remember in 2007, here in Ogu State, close to Lagos State here, it is a station where by the people that was voting at that time are more, 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 more than the registration of the people registered in that particular state. What can you say to that? See, if you are, what, what is the parameter your guests use to make sure the, the what election in this country? A station we have by. Have you ever seen before a sitting government what election before, before now? It has never happened. If it happens, you can catch it by fingers. But this time around, a lot of a lot of incumbent governor, they lost the election. Maybe they want to go to Senate and all that. They lost. See, if you are the BFAS did the wonder. The BFAS that I might put in place, he did the wonder because in last time, in, I think in 2011 as well, in that state, mentioned three or five states in this country that pulled out one million this time around. People are expecting Bonu, Bonu, the almighty Bonu state. So give us APC, so give us like one million plus. How many did we get from that place? That's what tells you that this time around, real election happened. This time around, no okay. election uh, you know, happened. I, I get the point, and I'm sure Alaji Abdullah is also uh, listening as well. Uh, let, me, let me go to him uh, so that I can get his response. And uh, I want to thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Yakub, uh, for calling in on the program this morning. Okay. Um, we're running out of time, but we'll give you, you know, sufficient time to air whatever your contribution is going to be on this. The, 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 the assertion of Yakub is that all the kind of phantom votes that we had always had to endure uh, weren't possible this time because of the very vi uh, beavers um, that, that you criticized. Now, nobody's saying Beavers was perfect. It failed, you know, it disappointed INEC in certain places. But um, your, your general reaction to the idea of there was there were less fraudulent votes this time than Nigerians have been used to. Yes, um, Mr. Iori, let's not forget that we're talking about two different elections here. The ones he was able to give example were the governorship election that held two weeks later. In fact over two weeks later, because they had to extend the timeline, you know, to be able to improve on the credibility of the first election they held for the presidency. You will agree with me that the effectiveness of the beavers came to play during the governorship, not during the, the, the presidential. And the bone of contention here is the presidential election. 
which I told you we are not satisfied with, and I describe it as worst. Your, your, the, caller said, the caller said uh, in his own life uh, he hasn't seen an election as credible as this. Is he also saying that uh, he, has, he was not around when we had June 12th election that uh, produced uh, Chief M.K. O. Abiola of blessed memory in this country in 1992-93? It remained the most credible election and the reference point, even to Yakubu, that oversaw you know, the, the last election. They have made reference to, 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 to that election of uh, uh, 1993. It still remained the reference point, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa as the best and the most credible example of how to conduct election. But here you have people promising and pledging and taking as much resources as INEC has taken. All of us went to that election with the assurances it was going to turn out the best on account of the assurances given to us by INEC. But it turned out short of expectation. And you expect us to come here and say we are satisfied because your candidate emerged there from? No. We had our problem as PDP going into that election. You know? But yes, okay. the election was not credible, but the, that of the governorship that some people failed, which he cited as example, was a, a, a great, a great uh, improvement by far to what we had earlier during the presidential. Thank you. I want, thank you very much, uh, Alaji Ibrahim Abdullahi. Uh, we're going to have to leave it here. I wish we could continue, uh, but you know, time you know, is a despot on programs like this. But I want to thank you very much, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of uh, the PDP, uh, was our guest this morning, Alaji Ibrahim Abdullahi in our Abuja studio. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's our program Thank you. today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folane. Bye-bye for now.